can't see anything yet. There's a thing in Scotland, the Right to Roam Act, which works great on paper, but then there's some beautiful historic chapels and duns and houses, and before you get there, there's a private road and you can't drive it, and there's a private gate and you can't go through it. And this looks, well, it's better than the main road, but we're not allowed to drive it because it's private. What I forgot to say on our really cool ramp is um, we're heading up to a very interesting, what was I suppose a stately home um, that fell into disrepair in the 20th century, but has really quite an interesting history before that. We're now on our way, as Julie said, up to an old stately house, a stately home, or mansion. It's called Poltalic House, and it was built by the Malcolms, who we saw the memorial to in the church. Uh, there's a bit more to the story than that. Uh, not a particularly good story, but I'll tell you that once we get there, if we get there. As we, as we say, we're on a private road that you're probably not supposed to be on, but we're going to have a look here anyway. This place is further away than we thought. It must be really, like, really big. It doesn't seem to get any closer. But we can see the chapel. The chapel was built along with the, the house. That was back in 18, 1850 odd. We'll get the details when we get there. Stop encouraging the sheep. You're not having one. I don't trust sheep. Something funny about them. They're always up to any good planning stuff. I'm not entirely sure what's happened with the weather. There's been pouring with rain for like the last, I don't know, year and a half. And today it's like sunny, and blue skies and stuff. So we're not complaining, but the channel's called Dreek Outdoors. It's not very Dreek. So the scenery around here is fantastic. It's just, it's that's Kilmartin Glen all the way across there. Okay. Uh, should we be, should we be pointing, pointing west? Yeah. Right, so that's north. I think. Did you know Kilmartin Glen is known as the Glen of the Ghosts? Well, it's a ghost story, is it? No. What? No. Who Apart from Gumtree Castle, no. Who could be called Glen of the Ghosts and there's no ghosts? I think it's because archaeologists picked up that many bodies and put them in the museums, oh. maybe. I don't oh, know. Alright. Okay. He's having a rant. Plant access laws this time. Gonna be a long day. That's a really nice chapel. And I'm not sure why we call ourselves Drake Outdoors, because even though it rains all the time, when we come out, it always looks like we're at the Caribbean and not in Drake, Scotland. He's still ranting. Oh dear. There's another gate that says no entry. We're getting good at this. What? through gates that you're not meant to get through. Well, technically, I'm not sure legally where we stand. You know, the land access laws in Scotland mean you can you know, go walking and hiking anywhere. As long as you're not disturbing you know, someone's business or invading their privacy. And that's a ruined house and a disused chapel. And we're not disturbing the animals, we'd walk along the road rather than in the field. So we should have the right to roam. Should be walk up here as we please, but they insist on putting fences in front and gates saying private no entry. Private for who? Nobody lives there. I better stop or I'm going to end up with a rant again. Julie's told me not to rant, I'm barred from ranting. I'm not allowed to swear either, I don't know how I'm going to do that. The stories about this place and you know. Encourage lots of swearing. Not stealth anymore. <laughs> yeah, but 
Yeah, but we're supposed to be being stealthy so we don't get spotted. Says Julie whistling at sheep and slamming gates and stuff. We will be heading to the house, but it's the family chapel is there anything to go by? <laughs> wow. Yeah, just to kind of give you an idea of how much money was involved in this place. This is the family chapel. It's a huge, massive windows, bell towers. That's just opulent. Is that the right word? I think so. I'm not wanting you to fall here by the way, I'm just filming for the to show how intrepid we are getting. See? That was that was epic, dangerous and stuff. What? We've got to make it look dangerous. People will not watch. Oh here was that over there. That's different, that wasn't on the map. There's more around here than we thought. Yeah. Through the wall we both have some house. Yeah. Oh. What, what, what? I'm nearly sure when I was looking up about Paul Tallach, Paul Tallach actually had a separate house that was called the Garden House. Oh, right. And it had the wall garden, and obviously whoever was growing the herbs and the food, yeah. and bits and pieces, that would have been them in there. Ah, so that could possibly be the, the, the garden over there. The garden That's quite cool. We'll never be investigate over there as well. We've got a lot of stuff to investigate today. This is good. This will look identical crosses. This is kind of odd. This is still this is still in use. Yeah, what we thought was a disused chapel isn't disused. Oh wow! Now this looks old. Like really old. Can't actually make out what it says. Right, we need to look that up when we get back. This is a fantastic old site. See, so it's not even why we came here. These headstones have got me curious. A whole bunch of identical headstones. I'm kind of guessing there'll be, there's more there, I'm guessing there'll be some, possibly some military thing. Dean of Argyle, ah, Dean of Argyle and the Isles, director of this church. Rector of St. Columba, Kilmartin, which is this place. Rector of St. Columba, yeah, these are the actual people who ran the church. Who all got buried here. Some more over here. Uh, these look more like private ones. And then more of these same black ones. It's really odd, black headstones. Henderson's. So Henderson's not a name that's really associated with this area. It's Freeman. slab. That's huge. That's got a similar in size to the ones we saw in Iona. And they were some massive crosses. Yeah, these are really recent graves. That's 2016. Agatha Temple Lewis.
I assume they're possibly recent relatives of the current uh, owner of Poltalloc and this church. Oh, I've lost Julie, she's disappeared. Yeah, this church is really quite fantastic. Hey, where's Julie? Hey, I've lost Julie again. Actually, I want to turn a look at this stone. These kind of orange mosses and stuff on it. This kind of orange lichen. Really strange around here. Uh, oddly enough, the last few videos from the Eurist, the, all the rocks there were all covered in that kind of similar kind of orangey yellow lichen. But things around here generally aren't. Things around here are usually green because of the amount of rainfall we get. Julie's been kidnapped or something with some kind of strange cult. No, this is the history of this place that wouldn't really surprise me. Right, the wife's gone missing. No idea where she went. Yeah, I have no idea where Julie's gone. Garden, she'll have gone to the garden. She likes like plants and stuff. Right, find Julie. She's in the church. What are you doing in there? We're trying to be discreet. Doing churchy things. This is worrying me. What's inside? I know there's a church inside, but what? You were going through something about looking for you up the paths and hunting. Did you realise you were breaking and entering now? She's Irish. Breaking and entering comes in her, her blood. <laughs> And probably a wee bit creepy. Obviously not in use, despite the fact that it does look like it's in use, but somebody's been nesting there and eaten a lot before they left. In other videos, oh my goodness, this is stunning. I'm not sure why there's a bird's nest out on that door. and I hope I don't lock myself in. Yeah, I've just locked myself in. <clears throat> Quite impressive lock there, but don't want to lock myself in. Um, this is, I was built originally as a family church, and like I've said in other videos, um, a lot of churches were, I don't know how you explain it, it's, they were built, um, very elaborately to show the wealth of the people. People who built churches, I think in those days they thought if it was built much more elaborately than the last one that it would bring them closer to God and a better chance of heaven. But it, it is really quite stunning. I have a very, very old emblem there. We have the Roll of Honour. Right, this is the Roll of Honour for the Portalic family and their estate from 1939 to 1945, i.e. the Second World War. And there are various Malcolms. There's one with the OBE. He was in the Highlanders, another Highlander. Um, there's a Malcolm who served in the Home Guard. And there is J.T. Leacock. He was in the Fire Royal Air Force, sorry. He was killed. Uh, 
there's an A. MacLeod. He was a corporal in the Highland. There's the Argyll and Sutherland Highlanders. He was taken prisoner during the war. This is actually a really good roll that lets you know that, yeah, this is a small place. A lot of the estate were obviously farmed out during the war. Ah, this is a poppy, uh, one of 888,246 planted around the Tower of London. Um, it was to commemorate the First World War, um, and each poppy that they put out represented one of the fallen. Uh, I remember the British Legion were selling them. We also have the Roll of Honour for the First World War. And I think what is so obvious is, first of all, how many people lived in the area who obviously served the estate, and how many left for war. And if we look at this list, the list of RIPs, it really shows there was quite a percentage of these guys did not come back. Again, the Malcolm family are represented right up to really present day along the walls of the church. That sorry, I'm I'm <gasps> this is Amazing. Look at the ceiling. Oh, wow. This is just a stunning piece of architecture. I know it showed that people have probably more money than others. <laughs> but private chapel for the Malcolms themselves. It is really quite stunning. very much like Kilmartin Church. It would appear these people like to be separated from the rest. Yeah, apart from the churchy stuff in the church. Well, more chapel-y stuff in the chapel. Oh, sorry, chapel. chapel yeah, chapel stuff in the chapel. Stop encouraging the cows. You're trying to attract mere wildlife. It's a tax on them, domesticated. Domesticated way too ton. I'm only a wee thing, you know, I'm delicate. I don't get trampled by a cow. It's very nice of them to leave these kind of advisory notices for us. To let us know it's dangerous. You can't do that gate, can you? Julie's not good with gates. This gate's broke. Fix that. And this is the main house at Potala. Yeah, unfortunately slightly obscured by bales of haylage or silage but I imagine we'll probably get a wee bit closer <laughs> the impression 
impressiveness of this building is out there. Yeah, we're surrounded by haylage, silage. It's rotten. But it's really some place. And the view it commands, you can see the steeple of the chapel I was in. Just, wow, how the other half lived. This is Paul Tallock House. I say it's got quite a nasty history. Uh, back in the early early 18th century this area was owned by the Malcolm clan who were a branch of the Clambles. Uh, I think it was in the early 18th century they changed the name from Macallum to Malcolm. They built this house. This is where I frantically try and find my phone to get my notes. Uh, in 1847 this house was built by the Laird of Poltalloch, Malcolm, Neil Malcolm. Uh, and it was really a show of his wealth because he was a very rich guy. See, that, see this house was built to show off their wealth. They were one of the wealthiest families in Scotland, primarily due to their involvement in the slave trade. Uh, they owned about I think it was 10 or 11 plantations in Jamaica and had thousands of slaves. Uh, and the money from that is what built this house. It really is incredible the size of it. I just realised there's actually another part behind it. It's absolutely enormous. I mean, just these windows. I mean, those windows must be, what, 12 feet high? It's ridiculous. You see, this whole property was built on the proceeds of slavery. Uh, primarily by the 12th Laird of Paul Tillock, uh, Neil, Ma or Neil Malcolm, Neil Malcolm. Jesus. I just can't believe the size of this place. It's incredible. The, the building itself is classed as at risk in terms of historic buildings. Uh, critical, I think it was the word they used. So I'd rather not go clambering about inside it because I'm looking up at some of those windows and they do actually look like they're about to collapse right now. So I'm going to keep my distance. Unless I get too curious, in which case I might go in anyway. Uh, yeah, anyway, back to the history of the place. Now, the 12th Laird, Niall Malcolm, was the one who was primarily dealing with the slave trade and rum and cotton and such like in Jamaica. They also had business interests in Honduras, uh, Antigua. Uh, they actually had a cattle, a cattle ranch in Australia as well. Uh, it actually makes me wonder how many people from the, you know, exported to the colonies from Scotland ended up working on his cattle ranch. I'm going to assume that's a conservatory, but what? Look at this place. This is ridiculous. Everyone's just ornate and carved and just... Wow. Now this 12th Laird, Niall Malcolm, uh, let's say he, had, he owned a lot of slaves and that's where all this money came from to build this house. Now, during the, 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 the mid-1800s, uh, the abolition of slavery was kicking off, quite rightfully so. Uh, however, uh, now Malcolm opposed it and when it eventually kicked in and slavery was abolished, uh, the government decided to pay off the owners of slaves in compensation. And Niall Malcolm received about £40,000, which I think in today's money is about, I think it's about £5.3 million for his property losses. Now you think that uh, you know, getting rid of the slaves was a good thing, 
albeit against their will, they had to turn to another means to make money. Uh, at this stage, uh, the twelfth laird passed on, and the estate went to his son, also now Malcolm, now Malcolm the twelfth or thirteenth laird of Poltalk, the thirteenth laird of Poltalk, uh, who obviously couldn't make the money from slavery and uh, plantations anymore, so he found another way, sheep. He then started driving the clearances in this area, the Highland clearances, though we're not really in the Highlands yet, but he cleared families and you know, employees from this land that have been living here for you know, centuries. He uh, cleared them off and as you can imagine you know, there was rioting and the usual Highland clearance type thing. The people rioted, there was about 100 men uh, resisted being kicked off the land, uh, eventually losing out because the, the state took the side of the landowner and intervened and the people were eventually evicted. Uh, I'm not sure how many of them had to emigrate or move to somewhere else in this area to live but see we've not looked into those records yet. But it's just it's sickening the, the size of this place and how much this guy profited from slavery and the clearances. And then to, when we visited Comartin Church earlier there are plaques on the wall talking about how much how much good he did to preserve the land in his estate by kicking the people off it. That's sickening. Almost as sickening as the size of this building. Now the building itself, as well as being the family home, also had a, you know, office accommodation, a, you know, kind of business offices, and it was a kind of a seat for business. A, you know, kind of multinational you know, own, business owners would come here and you know carry out their business in Paul Tallock House. Uh, the whole place was about making more money and making more fortune for the family. I say we'll go and visit the the current property that the family the name is attached to. That's Dumtroon Castle, which is not far from here. In fact, I think it's just over there somewhere. See the cellars down below it as well. So there's another level below this. And I count one, two, three, four, four stories. This man accused me of being the trespasser in the church. I'm not trespassing, I'm exploring. It's different. This is this the it's crazy. Anyway, back to a little more history about the house. Uh, in 1902, there was a fire in the house. Uh, apparently, it was started in one of the downstairs fireplaces, and the place was devastated. The fire basically destroyed pretty much the entire interior. The roof collapsed, all sorts. But it's okay because. The servants were sent back in to 
retrieve all the valuable items and furniture from the library. I'm not sure whether they were ordered back in or they volunteered, but I wouldn't be volunteering. And there's another huge hole in the floor. That's... I've got more day in here. I should get out of here. This is like dangerous and shit. Wow. This is... Yeah, there's an entire downstairs below this. trying to step very carefully here because I don't trust the floor. Even though I've seen several places where it doesn't exist anymore. Oh look there's another one. Uh, anyway, back to this fire. The fire in 1902 pretty much devastated the place. They did rebuild it and they were still reusing it, still using the place. But uh, I think it was in the 30s, I think, they decided that the place was just too expensive to run. So the family moved themselves to Dun Duntrin Castle. I can't imagine why you would th find this place too expensive. Yeah. Just wow. See, I haven't actually walked around the entire building yet. There's, well, I probably won't because I see it does look a bit treacherous. There's a huge big lump of rock down there which I imagine came from the roof somewhere. I think these trees are actually what's holding half of this place up. Yeah, I don't really trust the, the ground here, so... Yeah, there's another hint. Yeah, this place was five storeys high. See, there is another section over there. I'd quite like to have a wee browse around, but I'm not sure how you get there. Find Julie again. Oh, actually, hang on. I haven't had a look in over here. I was going to go in and have a look at that. What I'd imagine might be a conservatory. Oh, Julie's already in it. I don't know whether it was the business this guy was into or whether something happened here that hasn't been recorded. This place is just creeping me out. It's um, completely abandoned now, obviously. It doesn't have a roof. The roof was taken off in the 50s, which was the way with a lot of these stately homes. Um, tax still had to be paid on the assets if the roof was still on. Um, so guys like this would have taken the roof off to save paying taxes, but unfortunately the house fell in disrepair. At this stage, he was moving back over to Duntroon Castle that we talked about. Um, so he was moving back over there, so he didn't want to pay tax on two buildings, so the roof had to go and the building had to go. And it's unfortunate because the architecture is absolutely stunning. This house was where the first West Highland Terrier was bred. The white. Westies, mainly called Jock and Hamish, <laughs> that are feisty and we've all grown to love and admire. The lady of the house had her terriers, 
that they were fawn in colour. Obviously, like any other big fancy house, there were hunting parties came and that was obviously all the rage for the wild hild. The one one particular event, two of her dogs got shot. I think the colour of them wouldn't have helped their case. They would have blended in to the bracken and unfortunately a hunter saw something moving, shot, and it was one of her terriers. So she decided that maybe beige wasn't the colour to be going and maybe it might be a better idea if they had white ones. Yes, so when the mid 1800s this lady has lost a couple of her dogs and she thinks white would be a good idea. One issue with white, white dogs especially where kennel club is concerned and a lot of thing, a lot of breeders find that white dogs are weak. There's a better chance they might be blind, there's a better chance they might be deaf. So they're not generally kept. Unfortunately their fate is usually short lived life drowned at birth. So they weren't really doing something that was common at the time. People had a lot of superstition about white dogs and obviously the superstition meant that they had to be removed. But the head gameskeeper of the estate travelled as far as Fife and got the Pit and Weem Terrier and obviously special request was put in for any, I suppose you would call them an albino strain of these little dogs and brought them back here, started to breed them and the rest is history, or is it? Martin doesn't like this bloke, and now I know why. <laughs> he took the credit. His name is synonymous with the West Highland Terrier, when realistically, it was his head gameskeeper. There are some reports, however, that say that he wasn't keen to take on the name of the Westie, but I think that was more to do with the fact that white dogs had a lot of superstition and dodginess surrounding them with the locals. I'm going to say the architecture is stunning. The picture windows are stunning. The views are stunning. There's something about here I'm not feeling it. I don't know. Just thought I would record this bit for when the whole place flipping collapses. Mm-hmm. Not that I can put a claim in. The windows. It's clear that this man made plenty of money in the slavery. Because when this house was built, more than likely would have still been a window tax window tax that this boy wasn't really worried about clearly I'm just being careful it's a wee bit crazy here I see a chimney pot And I think those chimneys might be on the way down. So I'll just be careful. And there's also a very, very spooky drop to nowhere. It's such a shame. Um, I know a lot of these buildings have dark histories. But it could be useful for something. It's just beautiful. In through this window you can see the different floors by the different fireplaces lined up against the corner of that wall.
No, we're not getting a cow. It doesn't want to come home with us. No, don't just stay there. Come on. Stay. Mm. Yeah, point. Uh, we've decided we're not going to go and do the rest of Comart and Glen today because we've got just too much footage from that place, which you probably have already seen by the time you see this. Yeah, I would rather and do Kilmartin and Glen properly. Yeah, I mean, we, don't want, we don't want to rush around it because there's an awful lot of stuff there. To be honest, Kilmartin Glen has a lot of prehistoric and historic sites, but we actually find another one as we were driving here, so we'll probably want to research that one too before we come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's ranting again. Or fighting with his camera. We're fighting with this camera so we can rant. That house has kind of got me thinking about the whole idea of inheritance. That in the UK, we, you know, everybody believes strongly in inheritance and handing your, your property and stuff down to your family. And, you know, families been given houses and property and land and such like all the time. And it's expected. But what's not expected is for the person inheriting that land or that property to be responsible for the acts that actually gained that property in the first place. Let's say that place was basically built. All this land was bought through slavery and the clearances. The, the, the current laird, you know, he could be a really nice guy, never met the guy. You know. In fact, as far as I know, he's actually put in or contributed to a lot of the sites around here, you know, certainly to like, the church and uh, a few of the kind of historic sites, uh, and I gather that he's contributed to the upkeep of them. So sounds like he's a nice enough guy. But all that money he's now contributing came from slavery. Now, obviously, I'm very much against slavery and very much against what happened in the clearances. Uh, so I'll try to keep my opinion aside. Is it right that people should inherit land and property and wealth? from all gotten gains, really. Two hours later. Uh, I saw a quote in an article uh, a week or two ago and it kind of summed it up quite well. It was uh, something, well, I'm paraphrasing here, it was something along the lines of, you know, I have now inherited my grandfather's house and it's now mine. But how he got the house is none of my business. That kind of sums it up. <laughs>